Welcome to the Boston Art Podcast. Boston's premier art podcast. Where we talk art, culture, and philosophy. I'm Brian Huntress. And I'm Theodora Earthworms. Here is the show. I'm recording. Do we actually want to do this? I think so. Yeah. Well, so we're figuring shit out in the podcast world. What else is new? I know. Yeah. Welcome to another meta episode. Yeah. I'm having super fucking deja vu right now. Me too. Like, actually, I feel like I've yeah. dreamed this before, Maybe. this moment. Maybe we had a shared dream we didn't talk about. Like, like a hundred years ago. Huh. I have a bit of a cold. That sucks ass. Yeah, it's pretty it's bad. It's been very anxiety inducing considering, you know, the, the massive, <laughs> crazy global thing that's been backdropping everything that's happened for the past two years. Which thing? Uh, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I just started that sentence without even knowing where it was going to go. Huh. Yep. I don't remember any kind of thing happening in the last two years. Yeah. How have you been? Um, fine, I guess. I'm good. Um, I'm doing a lot of reflecting. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about right now. Everything's uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> doing a lot of reflecting, thinking about <laughs> I feel like I've said stuff like that before when someone's like, oh, like, how have you been? What have you been up to? Like, I feel like that, like, it's just like, my brain is like, oh, yeah, just say you've been, like, thinking a lot about life and reflecting or something. And then the person does, like, squinty nod at you and you're like, "Mm, oh, that's really nice. Wow. Yeah, and meanwhile, I've just been like, I don't know. know." Fucking around. Went to a movie last night. It was cool. Oh, yeah, we did. We saw Lamb. Yeah. Lamb. New A24 movie in the same style as, like, The Witch. You know, that type of thing. The Witch. <sighs> yeah, pretty good. Pretty low energy today, and I think it's because we're both a bit intimidated by the episode that we're about to make. Which is actually what we're going to talk about today. That's why we're a meta episode. Yep. This is the last episode of the Boston Art Podcast. Really? I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> we're retiring this project. Not really. All done. But we're just, like... I don't know. We've been... Well, we have been doing a lot of reflecting. But in a more intentional and serious way. Oh, maybe I should park right here. Oh, yeah. Um, But we've been trying to, like, just actually... Not figure out what we're doing. Because we love what we're doing. And we love interviewing people and doing this shit but we're also trying to figure out how the fuck we're gonna keep doing this because we put these out every week man and it's like it's fucking hard to do and we've been operating without any kind of structure Mm. without any plan without any equipment (laughs) without any expertise Without any cr- critical thought, without any critical feedback, without... Well, it, there's been a lot of critical thought. Let's give ourselves that. Well, not... We haven't had structured critical thought. That's true. And that's what we began, we begun now. Is, like, actually trying to, like, you know... Like, one... Maybe we could talk about the, uh, the alignment chart. Yeah. We, or maybe, maybe if you got out the notebook, we could see it, like, a little bit. Yeah. Like, me and you could see it. Um, well, let's back up a little bit, though. Okay. I think you're not giving us enough credit right well, now. Well... Because we have been thinking critically about it, but we haven't had a systematic approach to doing so. We have really long conversations about this. We have meetings, I guess, where... Well, actually, no. Meetings are a new thing. But we hang out every fucking day, so it's not that hard. Yeah, we're together all the time. Yeah, we talk <laughs> about this constantly. We work really hard on improving and... We are constantly turning over ideas for things that could be episodes, people we could interview, things that we want to talk about, things we want to learn about through the vehicle of the podcast. And that has all been really lovely, but a lot of it is usually pretty emotionally based. Like, I don't know, verbal versus yeah. analytical and numeric. And, and really disorganized in a way, too, because of that, because mm. it's all verbal we're not keeping track of anything. Like, there was somebody... Like, even even from a purely cl- clerical standpoint... And this isn't anything to do with you... Because you've done an awesome job booking everything. But there was somebody... We booked an interview with... And scheduled an interview with... And we just forgot... Forgot forgot to do it. They forgot to. 
But like we, we just never hit each other. We right? just never. We just completely forgot to to interview a person that we had set up an interview with. Yeah. And we didn't even know. And then we posted an episode that we, like like we just missed it. We just missed it. And then I saw them post a <laughs> thing, and I was gonna share it because I was like, "That's really cool. That's really good. Good points, person." And then I looked on their page, and I was like, "Wait a fucking minute! Oh, I shit. know you." <laughs> yeah, because we like. You know, I I like to think I know you think about it similarly, but it's really nice to have like the roster of people we've interviewed and just seeing them on Instagram and stuff because they're I like to think of them as just like like they have nothing to do with us in their own professional lives. You know, they're obviously their own independent people, but I like to think of them as like our our homies, our extended like collective of people that we've like yeah you know anyway, but like they're in the club. But yeah, everything has just been incredibly verbal and it's so easy to forget things. Like I forget things very easily and that's like really difficult for me and that like makes me like miss doctor's appointments and like, you know, like I, like I can't, like there's a lot of very like basic things in life that I have to do that I like struggle to do a lot, you know? Yeah. Like I need like a (laughs) caseworker to fucking... (laughs) You know, but it's okay because I'm like still functioning despite that. But, um, that so that I think makes the the podcast kind of difficult because that leaves a lot of extra work that you're 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 not responsible for, you know, and that I'm you know, but like it just kind of leaves like some some things just whipped into the air, and both of us are like, oh no, and then everything occasionally crashes. With um, scheduling? Not just scheduling, but just the way the content is produced, how we're thinking about it, guests, what we're talking about, like, how we're talking about it, like, Mm. you know what I mean? And, like, it's just, like, we're kind of, as I said the other day, I feel like we have created a monster that is now eating itself. (laughs) Well, expand on that a little bit. Well... I know what you mean, but that needs explanation. <laughs> <laughs> so this kind of relates to the alignment chart a little bit. If yeah. you could break that out real quick so I could look at the categories. But we mean... basically made... Let me see that piece of paper, the top one. This one? Yeah. Or this one? No, no, no. Just the, the top one right there with the with the codes on it. Let me see. Okay. Oh, oh. Yeah. Um, basically, it's like an X and... Like, it's a cross-access thing where one of the lines of access is, is a gradient one side of it is sincerity and on the opposite end of that gradient is a shit post Mm -hmm. so there's content that is completely sincere and authentic and then on the opposite side there's content that is just an an, like an absolute spaghetti at the wall shit post yeah and then and the cross access that goes across that access is what we called some like uh on one side is something that is completely dense and inaccessible academic no presentation like think of that as like something that's like a 17 hour lecture on youtube by a professor that's droning on and on and on it's professional it's nice it's good but it's dense which isn't necessarily a bad thing right it's just you gotta buckle in yes and on the opposite side of that access is something that's like a youtuber It's like, hey, what's up, guys? Today we're going to talk about the top ten things every artist should do to be good at art. Yeah. You know, that and that is what we would consider hyper accessible. Yeah. Something that is so accessible in general and comforting and easy to view by anybody that it loses its niche. It loses its educational value. And it's so general and accessible that it's just not. It becomes clickbait. It's yeah. It's just basically a fucking BuzzFeed listicle. Yeah, that's what we actually named that category. It goes from dense to BuzzFeed. Yeah, dense and inaccessible to YouTuber BuzzFeed clickbait. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. So that's our four alignments, basically, is sincerity to shitpost, inaccessible to to YouTuber, you know? And we found, we basically ranked every single episode that we published in this in this category and almost everything we probably maybe we shouldn't say like the names of them just so we don't make i don't know make it weird or anything yeah but (laughs) but everything almost everything save for like i would say 75 percent of them fall into sincere the sincere category but leaning towards dense Mm. 
like the dense and sincere. And we considered it that way because we feel like we are a niche podcast and we occasionally interview people that are talking about incredibly niche things. Yeah. Like Sarah Gurin's interview comes to mind where, uh, you know, shout out Sarah, uh, leather work, uh, boot Amazing. design. That, that is such a cool interview. That, that so is, fun. that is, I would consider as interesting and cool as it was, it was, hi- is hyper niche. Yes. You know what I mean? Versus something, I don't know, actually, I don't know why I need to contrast that right now, but like, <laughs> or another one might be Diana Stellan where that was very niche because it was very much focused, even though it was just us talking about her art and what she does and who she is. We were also, uh, talking about some really, uh, I guess just, you know, industry, heavy industry information. Yes. But Arts the industry Gallery information. world specifically. Yeah. And that was fucking cool. That was like so educational. I don't think we've talked a ton about that, that uh, interview, but that was like illuminating. I think at the time that we recorded it, we were afraid to talk about interviews in other episodes because we didn't want to seem like weird. Yeah. Like, it felt, we felt like we were creeps if we did that. Right. Which is actually kind of funny. Because, but, you know... The, we were floored by that episode. We right. We were so excited. <laughs> Everybody, anybody who listens to this podcast or any of the guests that have been on here don't know this. Nobody knows this probably. But every single interview we've ever done, we talked extensively. Yeah. For probably fucking hours about the interview after it. But we never recorded it because we didn't want to seem weird. Well, we don't record those because that requires pure unfilteredness. This is like, despite us being authentic on this podcast and wanting to actually really represent ourselves, this isn't like, you know, I can't talk about like my family or something, or we're not going to talk about intimate details about our relationship, or like, we're not going to talk about things that we thought about people in like a completely like open way even if they're not bad things yeah like it's just just, there is we are being filtered right now yeah versus when we're not recording and we're talking about and reviewing these things that we've experienced and created we are being 100 billion percent not filtered yeah because we're not recording and if we didn't do that Oh, honestly, maybe that would make the fucking, maybe if we fucking recorded like that, that would make them awesome. (laughs) Fuck yeah, I have no idea. I think it just comes back to that thing of, like, not wanting to seem like a weirdo. I don't know. And, like, honestly, we, like, you know, and also one thing that I'm pretty sure that we both agree on is that we don't, I don't really see much need. Like, I don't really think there's many reasons I could even think of why we would need to say horrible bad negative things <laughs> or anything like that on this podcast or about other people the nick thurman episode was a little bit of an exception but we're going to unpack, unpack that a lot more in a future <laughs> episode we can't talk about nick yet but we content will. coming content coming a little bit of a preview about the ki- the kitsch painters and the, and the nerdrum m- multiverse <laughs> <laughs> but you know we, so we did get a little bit, we did get a little bit like offensive towards them in that episode, probably. <laughs> but besides that, you know, like if we made an episode or if we interviewed somebody and we felt like it would affect other people negatively or hurt people or something, like we just wouldn't even post it. Yeah. Actually, I, you know, we don't really. I know that I, ju- I just spent a lot of time making that point, but I kind of forget why I was. So I kind of feel like I accidentally just pointlessly tangented. I don't know what I was, what my aim was there. There's no need to justify the tangent. Anyway, but. Yeah, we don't really talk shit about people that we've interviewed either, though. We don't, yeah, we don't do (laughs) that. That doesn't really happen anyway. And like, we've, we've made it, we've made episodes that we won't post because they went south. Or we, you know, or have like maybe had some experiences with interviews that went south that we also Mm. will never, you know, will never air just because. No need to contribute to negativity. There's yeah, enough the thing, though. bad like, stuff in the world. Well, that's the thing. So it's not even, like... I feel like this sounds like our main concern is, like, that we talk a bunch of shit behind the camera and we don't want to upload that. But it's, <laughs> not, it's not really like that. I feel like the majority of what we have been struggling with and what we actually have been talking about a lot in the last couple of days, which is why we kind of made this alignment chart, is... In the pursuit of authenticity, in the pursuit of authenticness, 
which I think is the only thesis that we really have with this podcast. <laughs> um, it's really easy to apply a lens of complete authenticity to interviews because we're going into them, we're trying to get as much of a real depiction of that person as we can. And it's a one-shot episode, right? <laughs> but we're also trying to practice these things with ourselves and the ways that we interact with our audience and the ways that we portray our own character and our views. And we're trying to be as unfiltered as possible. But who actually has an objective, unfiltered perspective from an outside point of view on who they actually are with no intentional public persona? Nobody. So trying to figure out what niche this podcast falls into after about a year of us making these recordings has been a really weird process of trying to get an obje objective macro lens on who we are as personalities and therefore the content that we're making without having an intentional angle. Yeah. Which has been fucking horrible <laughs> but yeah and that kind of brings it back to the idea <laughs> of creating a monster that is now eating itself which is why i started talking about the alignment chart but what i meant by that is that we we have wanted deeply for this podcast to be um to be as authentic and real as possible yeah and we like and we crave that we want nuance and we want things to just be to just be real and to just i don't know we don't want things that are like super you know just commercialized and polished and and, and mixed and mastered and like what i don't know we just want just to fucking witness just candid life yeah and and somehow capture even a shred of that through our podcast there's this thing people talk about with painting sometimes or i think it's like a romanticism thing like that whatever that movement was where a lot of people i forget who said this but there's this quote where it's like we you know artists are trying to capture nature and mm -hmm. to and to depict something like we're trying to de depict god's creation of nature right and who are we to even like get like we what am I trying to say here? Like nature is so profound, was so profound to these painters that they felt like they could only come close to creating just like a, like a, a mimicry, a mimicry. Yeah. Like just, I don't know. I, I forget what I'm saying, but like, who are, who are we to think that we can capture God's creation and make it for ourselves? Mm. Who are we to, who, what audacity do we have to think that we could do that? Yeah. You know, and that's like a something that some painters believe, but I kind of feel like that maybe is something that like they're that we're kind of running into here as well, where like something that is authentic and candid and beautiful and nuanced and just life that is so special and so amazing that like who are like who are we to think that we could just conjure that and to just to, to just I don't know to just whip that up <laughs> you know and like and that's the thing is that some of these things that we've been trying to do with the podcast have felt inauthentic or have felt to us like bad or like just not working like in our heart of hearts yeah and because the mi the mission of the podcast for us was to make something that was the opposite of that it has almost felt like the authentic the authentic and good thing to do would be to not make the podcast I disagree with that, but I know what you're well, saying. Well, like, that's like, where am I? It's, it's like, it I goes think, full circle though. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it's like we're, we want to be authentic so bad that we're, that we're probably avoiding things that feel inauthentic. And if mm. the podcast starts to feel inauthentic, that's like a, there's a forced version of, it, of authenticity that's happening. Yeah. That's like an internal crisis. That's like a hero becoming the villain by accident. <laughs> Well, there's also an element, I feel like, in creating new episodes and in trying to... Like, the thing about content creation and promotion and making something that isn't just... Like, in the beginning, I feel like it was really easy because there was no traction yet. Like, there wasn't any pressure to make what we've already been making. There wasn't any pressure for consistency. There wasn't any brand building. There wasn't any project. Bi-weekly. We were just... <laughs> Bi-weekly. We were just <laughs> recording and... The idea of uploading it to Spotify came after we started recording. It wasn't even always going to be a public thing. And it was very easy to do then. Cause it's like making a home video. Like, nobody's even paying attention to you with the camera because nobody gives a fuck. But if yeah. someone tells you that they're f filming you for their Instagram story, suddenly everything's weird. 
You know Everything I mean? is weird. Yeah, you see that in home videos. People will literally say, don't even care what they say in home videos from the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Or early 2000s. But, like, if, like, some person was filming you with an iPhone at a party... It's like there's 2,000 people there. You'd be like, get that thing the fuck out of my face. Yeah. <laughs> don't fucking film me with your fucking phone. And there's, like, a creep. self-inflicted <laughs> version of that, I feel like, that started to happen. Because then the other question is when we're talking about like, like this is a two person team. Like we don't have talent and then creators, like camera people and stuff and then a production team and then like editing and like, it's not separate people. It's us that are trying to be authentic like this, us that are capturing it. And then us, like we're the ones that are also uploading it and trying to brand it. And then it becomes a question of like, so if this is authentically us and authentically the things that we think what kind of podcast are we so that we can get this to the right people and advertise it the right way and continue to make work like we have been making which brings out two branching problems which are who are we (laughs) just what who are we and how can we monetize that and how can we stay those people without being inauthentic and that's where it becomes a clusterfuck because it's like there's actually that's that's not the right it, way to think about it. And it's such a psychotic and self-absorbed thing to think about, too, where you're, like, walking through the world thinking to yourself constantly, am I being authentic? Am I really being who I actually am? Am I if, a good brand? Am I If I'm wondering if I am being myself, does that mean that I am inherently not being myself because I am constantly questioning it? Is there an ideal I'm even comparing myself to? Am I even... Am I... Ca- like what the where the fuck am i am i just floating in a (laughs) void of values and i don't even know like untethered to any kind of like (laughs) any normalcy at all yeah like what am i even like what what am i doing and then the best part is when we're like in a car in like a dunkin donuts parking lot recording (laughs) this having this meltdown and both of us are separately having the meltdown and trying not to talk about the meltdown and there's just you just feel stupid at the same time because it's like we're recording a podcast on our iPhones and it's probably not that deep, <laughs> right? And there's a big pressure. You want to you want to sound I want to sound smart. You want to mm-hmm. sound smart or funny or like yeah. have like a good opinion. And I also want to be authentic, but I also don't want to say something that like maybe if my boss hears this, they're not gonna like. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, and that's and that kind of goes back to the kind of filtered aspect of it where there is some mandatory social contract filtering that we have to do. Yeah. Not because I don't know, it's just that's just And it's the, interesting to think about that too. Oh, sorry, did I interrupt you? Oh, no, I oh. don't really know where I was going. Go ahead. <laughs> um, well, it's interesting to think about that too because some of those filters are things that you would apply in any situation like i'm not gonna probably say something fucking crazy that i would get fired for like hanging out with my friends either. yeah you wouldn't even say something <laughs> like that privately yeah like i just wouldn't do that <laughs> but it feels like you might like you know the feeling of like when you're standing on a rooftop or something and you're just like what if i jumped oh my god like yeah. oh what if i what if i did that, that and then just you're like me anxious <laughs> right and it's like i have no reason to do that like i don't have to right but my legs might jump <laughs> dude yeah that's like a- it's that feeling yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Sorry, trigger warning. I escalated oh, the conversation no, it's okay. a bit, but it, it's okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I totally know exactly what you mean, and that's like kind of an interesting thing to think about. That's yeah. like a pretty common stage fright thing too, where somebody on stage for the first few times isn't necessarily afraid. Like, there's so many things you can be afraid of, but one one thing that could happen is like. You're so terrified that you're going to say something that's going to make everyone hate you. Mm. Or you're going to say some dumb thing that everyone's going to be like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, you know, that TikTok audio where it's like, you need to leave. <laughs> like, you like end up like that, that guy from yeah. the audio. But like, and I think, and that, that can be paralyzing where it just kind of like, it's like, I for, I fucking forget what I was learning about. This is such like a botched like anecdote, but I was learning about, there was this like, uh, fucking computer AI program that these people had taught to play I forget, I think it was like a Tetris game or so. it was like some kind of computer game that this robot was playing or something and it had played it for so long and had won every game and I guess the one time that it was going to lose what it did instead of allowing itself to lose is it paused right before it lost huh. and just remained paused wow that's 
creepy to think about. Yeah, I probably just fucking completely murdered that, like, example. I don't even know what the fuck I just said. But, like, <laughs> but, like I think about that sometimes, even if that isn't what really happened. But, I mean, even if you just take that as a thought experiment, like, the idea that something can be so programmed and so hell-bent on winning that it would rather blow the whole thing up than lose. Yeah. And that's what freezing is. Mm. You know what I mean? That you're just pausing so you don't... Don't so you, die. So game over doesn't happen. Huh. You know what I mean? And obviously it doesn't work out like that because you end up... You know, freezing is just as bad as, you know, in result as saying something that you didn't want to say, you know? Because, like... I don't know. I've never... I've never had, like, a movie moment disaster, like, freezing up on stage. Yeah. Before, like, where you're just like... Ugh. I have. Like, <laughs> well, you were a kid. Like, so... I wouldn't feel too bad about that, but I have been gone on stage and just totally fucking like, like so nervous that like my hand was literally shaking, trying to actually like play it. Not even in, not even really in the distant past. Like that's happened to me in like the recent, the recent, recent history, you know, where just for some reason or another, some series of events just absolutely decimated whatever ability, psychological ability to perform. Yeah. Just some something fucking happened. You know, Bo Burnham, for example, famously uh, retired from performing. Yeah. Uh, because he was having panic attacks on stage. I think if you look up some interviews with him, you could find out a lot of detail about why he was experiencing that. But a seasoned performer who had like made millions toward the world, had tons of specials, developed mid-career a panic disorder where he would panic every time he went on stage. Poor thing. That sounds so hard. I know. Cool guy. But what you having a panic anyway. attack in front of like thousands of people? I can't even fucking imagine. Yeah. Jesus. I literally I've never I don't think I've ever I've never been on stage in front of thousands of people. <laughs> <laughs> like I literally I've never done that. I have panic too. I maybe I would. I would fucking black out probably. <laughs> Oh, man. That's the thing people say in AA, where they go, oh, yeah, it went from a blackout drinker to a blackout speaker. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, a funny thing to say, but it's true. Like, you just start talking, and it's, like, you just let it rip, and, like, suddenly yeah. it's, like, 25 minutes later, and everyone hates you, and, is <laughs> like, you just held the whole meeting hostage, and everyone's upset that you're still talking. Huh. And eventually, like, the chairman guy is, like, Bob, excuse me, Bob... Bob, we gotta get to other people. That's Sorry. what doing our podcast feels like sometimes. <laughs> Bob, hey, thank thank you. It's great hearing you, man, but we're gonna have to take some other people. Uh, <laughs> if you wanna keep talking, man, like we could totally meet up outside and discuss it, anything. You, uh, no. but like, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Anyway. But yeah. So I don't know how we got to. This is a slight anxiety tangent, I think, on our part. Yeah. But no, I just think that. I think that, like. I think it's really something that I compared our predicament with. Maybe this is more something that I'm experiencing in my own head. But something that I have I have thought about is like the how there's a common environmental perspective for people who they're so pro environment that they kind of feel like that if all humans died, the environment would be saved. Mm. Kind of like that perspective where I feel like sometimes valuing like, and I don't think that's a good perspective, but sometimes valuing authenticity so much makes you self examine so perilously Mm. that you feel like I might as well not talk because I am incapable of being 1 billion percent authentic. Yeah. And it's interesting. That just made me feel anxious saying everything I just said. You're being vulnerable. Maybe I'm being a little teeny bit vulnerable, (laughs) a little bit. Well, it's interesting, too, because we... Oh, how vulnerable is this going to be? Should I just, just fucking go? I don't know. Just fuck fucking it. go? All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we have been talking about this... It's been a really weird couple of weeks, to be honest. Because we've been talking about this in terms of, like, authenticity and... Conversational authenticity and connection and intimacy in conversation in our own relationship. In our uh-huh. own, like ability to connect with one another and then we started trying to record episodes and we kept getting in like weird 
like fights probably isn't the right word but just like recording and then one or both of us getting really anxious or upset or feeling misunderstood and then both of us were just sad and like shut up just delete the whole thing i don't even want to talk about this anymore (laughs) i don't give a fuck about ai robots fuck you (laughs) episode coming soon maybe (laughs) um (laughs) but it's just funny how there is like and this has happened in so many different incarnations of our creative relationship too but i just think it's interesting how that parallel is inescapable like just because this is a creative project and we're not talking about like our relationship or like it's some kind of emotional thing that happened to one or both of us in the past or whatever it is that you need to connect on it could be something completely arbitrary but those triggers still exist of like i don't feel like you're fully listening to me or i don't feel like i feel silly saying this or maybe just feeling exposed talking about something and immediately shutting yourself down because you think that your point is dumb even if the other person doesn't think that and then not being able to articulate that because you're upset and then the other person getting upset and thinking they did something wrong and it just imploding immediately before you've even gotten anywhere and how it's interesting that those things can like they're not really problems that can be separated because they're like what you're talking about isn't the issue it's the underlying trigger and i think it's interesting in the sense of um podcasting because i've never been in a band or something but I think historically, like, interpersonal relationships of band members have been the reason bands break up most of the time. Not always creative differences, mostly not. Yeah, what the fuck is a creative difference? <laughs> a creative difference is a, is a collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> hmm. Interesting statement, actually. But, like, yeah, I don't think, like, almost all... I mean, maybe there have been some bands that ended because they're like, you know what? Made a lot of money, done some good stuff, whatever. I want to try jazz now. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> We'll still hang out. Our sound doesn't jive. Like, I'm it sure that's, so I'm sure that's happened, but it's like always, almost always interpersonal yeah. uh, conflict yeah. or not. Actually, that's a, that's kind of a misleading way to put. I don't know if I like how I put that. I don't think it's interpersonal conflict, but what it is, is it's, it's irrens, ir, it's irrens, irreconcilable, ir, irreconcilable. <laughs> what the fuck was it? it is conflict that can, that, that, Irreconcilable conflict. Yes. Conflict <laughs> that cannot be fixed. Yeah. Because conflict always happens, and it should. It's supposed to. Mm. I'm a believer in conflict. I don't fucking like it, but you, it's, <laughs> like, it, it's really important. Because the thing is, also, I think a lot of the times people will... I've been learning this from making this podcast, actually, um, in a lot of other ways, but... A lot of times when people think of the term conflict, they think of a fight. They think of yelling. They think of crying. They think of shutting down. They think of disaster, a disagreement. And even if it's not like a big explosive violent thing where somebody's being an aggressor, it's like we're not connecting, like just sadness. And sometimes a conflict can be A, one-sided, or B, just somebody not expressing something. Like, the example of recording, like, something that we ran into a couple different times, we both did this at different points, is feeling like our point got shut down or wasn't hitting the right way, but then having the added pressure of, oh, I was going to say, with the bands versus podcast format, like, if you're performing a song or you're performing an existing album, you need to get along to play correctly, probably, but that content has already been made, versus a podcast what we're showcasing and the way the medium through which we're presenting our points and what the viewer is engaging with cannot be separated from our interpersonal relationship if brian and i are talking about something that i'm talking about third person right now but fuck it whatever okay. um, <laughs> if we're talking about something that is in the art world i'm talking to you and if i have an edge to my voice That's not what we're talking about, but that comes across, and that's being documented, and that's being presented for other people to listen to, which adds pressure to that, especially if you're feeling self-conscious. So what we've come up against in the past has been, like, I am trying to illustrate this point to you, but you're not understanding my point yet, and instead of saying, oh, wait, well, there's a little bit more that I need to say, I just drop it, or I get upset or something, and then I'm not listening to what you say because I'm feeling hurt, but I don't articulate that to you because there's an audience here, like... I'm not going to fucking say that in front of X many people for some reason. Mm. And then it creates more of a problem because that is where the conversation should have been. Hey, stop, wait, (laughs) let me say my thing. Mm -hmm. But instead I just ate it. And now I'm thinking, you don't care what I have to say. 
so why should I keep talking to you? And that takes away the openness, and there goes the fucking authenticity thing, and now we're just fighting about painting, and the episode ends, and we don't upload it. Well, dude, <laughs> I'll tell you what, that does happen in music and with bands, because, like, mm -hmm. while there may be, like, a, a conventional musical setup would be, you know, writing, creation, and rehearsal, and then performance. Yeah. But there are a lot of bands, like jazz bands, I mean, not ja jazz bands or jam bands is what I meant to say, but both are true. Uh, or just the type of band or even or even that could happen in the create in the creative process where if you were a, you know if you were playing a song and you were singing and you're playing with a guitarist but and the guitarist just was soloing the whole time and was just riffing and just like this absolutely just like it, it can be end up disruptive yeah versus a good like a good collaborative process would be people who are making room with each other and are actually con thinking about musically what is happening what the other person is playing hearing other people and letting their performance and their improvised contributions to the musical atmosphere be you know informed by the people they're playing with and respecting the other people they're playing with yeah versus somebody who's just like bah, 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 like <laughs> just like a fucking dickhead yeah like like nobody's gonna call you back yeah to make music with you if you're not making room for other people, you're just like a, you think you're a rock star. That's really interesting. That's like total, that's totally yeah. a thing. And like those, maybe those people just end up solo performers or something. I don't know. But like, there are a lot of people or like, for example, there are a lot of people that don't even like to, to do that from the beginning where there are people like, you'll, you might hear this a lot or like you'd hear this a lot of music circles of people who are just like, I don't actually like to jam. Yeah. Like, don't ask me to jam. I'm a songwriter. Yeah. I like to just sit down by myself and write songs. I'm not a jam guy. That makes sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, and to compare that to podcasting, I think that podcasting and being in a band, I, I actually relate a lot because like, I mean, I don't know, in a sense, both of them like very boiled down are creating some kind of intellectual sentiment and mm. displaying it for, a, 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 for people. Yeah. Right, because music, even if it is more emotional or visceral or something that's not necessarily a written word, it is it. It is something intellectually stimulating. Yeah. As a podcast is, and some podcasts are improvised and recorded on the spot, and some are written very carefully and produced and maybe even rehearsed in some way. Yeah. With that's many, actually, many, yeah, many, many takes. True. Honestly, like a big reason why our podcast is improvised. Like, if me and you had access to like real recording equipment and to you know uh reliable computers in a studio environment we could fucking write these yeah and do shitloads of takes and add fucking awesome music and like we had somebody helping us mix it like we fucking could do that but the reason that we can't the reason uh, the biggest reason we're not is because we're not in fucking studio well, that's true i think it also <laughs> Uh, this is maybe beside the point, but I feel like it also that is would take away from our point, authentic probably. authenticity. Maybe, yeah. I feel like the way that we record our podcast started out as a necessity thing. And still, I mean, nothing's changed. Like, it's still a necessity thing. If anybody wants to buy me a new laptop, hit me up. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I think... Yeah, maybe someone would. <laughs> I think it's also <laughs> become a vehicle for the way that we're trying to present this. Mm. Like, it is an important piece of the medium. It's kind of like... I, the way that I think about it... This is sort of like... I don't know. This might be dumb, but... I feel like it's like pre presenting a piece. Like, when you paint on canvas and you're trying to decide if you want to stretch the canvas or pin it up or whatever, or tack it to the wall. My preferred method of showing paintings right now is just using metal tacks to put it on the gallery wall or, like, yeah. pinning it up instead of stretching it because I like the rawness of that and the way that that looks. This is comparable to me oh right so there you're so the difference between creation and presentation yeah i think the lack of editing in the singular take is an expression of the medium is the message yeah or, i don't know or, how to <laughs> it's like it's like it's not the medium it's the i don't fucking know you know what i mean fuck this I, point i don't care no i i totally <laughs> i totally get that i think like it's the, it's the style. Yeah. Yeah, no, and you know what? Maybe if we did have access to all, all of that equipment and that, that type of stuff, maybe... It'd be fun to play with, though. It'd be fun to play with, but maybe we wouldn't even really, like, be inspired by it. Maybe it wouldn't even matter. We probably would. We'd probably make I a spin-off podcast. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, I I love 
recording and I love music and I love podcast. Like I, if you let me just fuck around in the studio all day, I'd have a fucking blast. <laughs> even, I'd, even if I just made some garbage at the end, it, it's, I, it's just a fun thing to interface with. Yeah. You know, as a, just as a medium, you know, but I derail those though. Oh, I don't even know where the fuck... I couldn't even tell you where you derailed us from. I was going to say that... That's the beauty of it, isn't it? (laughs) I just wanted to talk more about the last couple of days. Yeah. Because I think... What happened to that little... That little... The little chart? The little bullet points. No, the other one. Uh, the bullet points. Oh, the list. Don't tell them about the list. Just kidding. You told them about the list. I did. Where is the list? Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh. I been thinking about it a lot because we have been dealing with that kind of conflict we tried to record an episode that didn't work out yesterday well that was yesterday um and it led to a lot of really productive conversation a lot of really nuts and bolts kind of analysis because we had another conversation about this that was podcast adjacent, but we weren't recording. Mm. And when we had that conversation, we talked about our relationship and the ways that we communicate in each other a lot. I'm listening to an audiobook right now about, um, it's specifically about romantic relationships and couples, but essentially about um, attachment bonds and need in a relationship and the ways that people seek security from other people around them. Um, It's called Hold Me Tight. I think it's really interesting. Um, It's about the attachment theories um, by psychologist Bowlby and how they are usually applied to children and how this was the first psychologist. I don't remember who wrote the book, but um, she applies them to adult relationships and specifically about romantic adult interpersonal relationships. But I think it can be extrapolated a lot to creative relationships and friendships as well because a lot of the time what this is talking about, we talk about conflict and we talk about Um, disagreements as a really nuts and bolts factual thing like both parties will construct a narrative of what they think happened and the way that people will try and resolve conflict i think you see this a lot in like cooperative living situations the people will meet together discuss what occurred and try and come to an agreement on how to proceed which is all well and good in like maybe a living situation a work setting something like that but if you're really trying to build and maintain a healthy bond with another person Sometimes you have to talk about the reason that you went off about that shit. Like, maybe solving the actual problem isn't really going to make you feel better. Because it's not really about that. And that's where things like attachment come in. Where maybe what you're feeling is feeling rejected. And you need reassurance from the other person that they really want to hear you. And they really care what you're saying. And we can talk about the specifics after. But first I want to let you know that I'm here to listen to you. In whatever way it gets across to that person the best. So we had a long conversation about that. And then it came up again after we had thought it was resolved when we were recording. And then we addressed it like a creative thing. And it was interesting to think about that being a multifaceted problem. Mm. And right now we're recording really easily. <laughs> yeah. And it's one a kind of an interesting idea too is that like, you know, that that like one like a prerequisite for that is like vulnerability to another person yes you know what i mean and it's kind of interesting to think about that in the context of creative relationships because that isn't probably isn't exactly common in a lot of creative relationships because for you to like you like i don't know man like it's pretty common to be to you know to be vulnerable with your partner yeah or you know the you know somebody that you love or maybe a family member or maybe whatever but like i feel like in my experience it's not really common to just do that with your buddy yeah or somebody you're like producing songs with or you're doing a project with to like sit down and like be vulnerable with them and be like look i just like feel like you weren't really listening to me yeah. Or <laughs> like <laughs> people just like whether you like it or not, I don't know. Maybe it's my maybe I'm maybe it's my life experience and I I just have been limited, but like No, I relate to that. I feel like that's just not something people usually do. Yeah. You know, but I don't know. Maybe they should. I don't know, man. I have had a lot of conflicts with friends in in the past and in in years long gone that honestly like 
maybe could have been resolved and and taken care of by one party or somebody just liter- just like yeah just breaking down that wall and just act- and just like taking that risk and being and just saying that yeah and actually like revealing that you have been hurt yeah you know instead of just being a either not just being a tough guy about it but just being like and talking I don't about know. the reasons why you were hurt too can be important because sometimes another thing that was in this audiobook that I've been listening to and that I've definitely experienced and done in my own life is over communicating about the specifics of the fight versus the underlying feelings behind it like you can say you know you said this and the way that you were talking to me I didn't like because xyz blah 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 and what you're really saying is when you talk to me like this I heard this because I inferred that you felt this way and if you don't say that and nakedly present that even though that might feel like an accusation the other person doesn't necessarily know that that's what you think so they might say yeah I did say that I don't understand what's wrong with saying that I should be entitled to express this point of view blah 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 but they weren't really saying like go fuck yourself you're stupid I hate you they were just saying you know maybe next time you can hold the mic closer to my mouth when we're recording (laughs) Um, you know what I mean like sometimes there's inferred emotional messages and you're only talking about the surface level stuff and you think that you're communicating but you're not yeah and there's vulnerability not just in the expression but also in the receiving Mm -hmm. because you know someone might say to you like um i don't i'm trying to just think of like a fake like beef like i don't know like i didn't like the way that you uh fuck come on (laughs) like i don't know like i didn't like i didn't like the way that you said that to me like i didn't like the way that you asked me to be quiet while you were reading your book Mm. but like and the person says that to you and like sometimes you're you not you but like someone says (laughs) i don't like how loud you were being when i was trying to read and you hear okay so what you fucking hate me or like (laughs) you think i'm just fucking loud and (laughs) annoying and some kind of piece of shit and that i shouldn't even be here is that what you're saying (laughs) <laughs> like <laughs> and it's and it's kind of interesting because i'm not i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about like no, with the true. shit but like um <laughs> you turn around you say some dickhead shit like i'll be as loud as i fucking want right or and like then you're so, fighting right but <laughs> but like maybe maybe there could have been some vulnerability maybe i don't know maybe it could be productive to be like i, I have no idea like i don't know how like i I wish I had more background information on this type of thing, but like maybe like saying like when you say that to me, it makes me feel like you don't even want me to be here. Or like you don't even want me to talk. Yeah. And I know you might not mean that, but for some reason I, I feel like that. I feel that right now. Yeah. Like maybe that would, and cause like I'm, I'm like, I'm doing like somebody might say something like that to me and I'm like, so what you fucking hate me then? <laughs> like in my head, but you, and like, it's funny cause you know, you know that they don't mean that and you know that it would be extreme to yeah. say that but so but you but don't you still feel it but you don't so, so you don't cuz you know you don't want to be a douche or something but then you carry that you're still mm-hmm. acting with that that layer over yeah. you like you know and people can pick up on that like even if nobody knows specifically why you're upset or if you think that people don't get it if you feel like an outsider, people are going to pick up on you feeling like an outsider. And often people will take that to mean that you don't really want to be there. It will create a self-fulfilling prophecy of you being the person that's on the outside. Right. Because if you think everyone hates you and that nobody wants you to be around there, it's easier to like to to have some kind of to create confirmation bias. Yeah. And for that to be true, it's easy. It's like easier to 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 just believe that. And especially in, like, it's so true. And it's true in a lot of contexts. Like, this applies to, like, work environments and stuff even, where it gets even harder to talk about that there because it's maybe sometimes inappropriate to be completely vulnerable in a work setting. Yeah. Um, Because if someone straight up doesn't like you, you still have to work with them. So, I don't know. It can be hard there. But Mm. that's where creative collaborations and, like, artistic partnerships and business partnerships can be tricky because they are usually very emotionally vulnerable in the sense of the work that you're handling and the collaborations that you're making. Like, if you were writing a song with someone, you want to be authentic in the work that you're making, but maybe you aren't on the right level of authenticity with the person that you're writing with. 
which will get in the way of your ability to express yourself properly. And that can be true in the podcast, that can be true in an artistic collaboration. And there's also, like, I feel like we're talking about this in a really negative sense, but there's also really positive iterations of this. Like, I know a way that we kind of did this without even consciously doing it was, I think, I've talked about this before with the letter project, but um, when we first started exchanging letters, I, my first package that I got from you, you didn't take up a lot of space on the page. Like, they were very light sketches. And I, like, smothered them in paint and, like, sent you a fuck ton of stuff. And then you sent me completely, like, you decimated what I did and sent me a whole bunch of other shit. Mm. And it was, like, a kind of, like, there was a dialogue going on there in the creative, like, the use of space was a dialogue in itself that was separate from the content of the work that was, like, is it okay if I do this? a positive response and then a matching positive response and then there was a push and pull and a dynamic set for how we were going to do that creative work that allowed space for vulnerability to continue because there was a support in the manner of expression that was completely separate from our actual like friendship or relationship completely separate from the content of the art it was just a supportiveness in art making and i think you see that too with like sometimes people just completely connect when they start making music together or they just think the same way when they're writing or they think the same way when they're performing like and podcasting too like sometimes it can come really naturally and sometimes it comes naturally and then somebody something goes left and it's not expressed and that fall falls apart and i guess i don't really know what my point is but maybe there's a way that that doesn't all have to be for nothing hmm. what what part doesn't have to be for nothing things not working out like if everything has been good to a certain point maybe there's a certain level of trust that could be achieved with vulnerability and openness about whatever the perceived rejection was Mm. or overstep artistically or whatever it might be you know what's kind of an interesting thing too is that like one thing that i feel like is coloring this conversation in a big way is that is how me and you individually are defining in uh uh, authentic creative expression that's true because yeah. there are there are also some people that feel like an authentic real vulnerable creative expression might have nothing to do with their personal feelings as well like I don't know like because like maybe maybe and maybe there's kind of a hierarchy to this as well where you know maybe even if somebody is playing their instrument from their heart and soul maybe saying like hey maybe we could like kind of change up the way that rhythm here, the way that this melody is whatever, blah, 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 blah. Like that's like almost like technical yeah. in a way or, or almost practical. But with the lyrics, if you said like, Hey man, like that, like line about like this, like super, like ultra personal special thing that you wrote about, like kind of sucks or like, maybe you could change that. Yeah. Or like <laughs> maybe you could change the way that you wrote that. Like, you know, maybe it's, like, maybe it's a little bit different. You know what I mean? Like, then, I, I don't know. Like, maybe there's, like, I don't know. It's a lot to think about. Are we in the weeds right now? Should we, like, move this to a different type of subject? We could. Do you feel like we are? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Do-do-da-po? I just think it's interesting, because I think a lot of these concepts make sense in the context of, um, a creative relationship with another person at least in the ways that i view authenticity but i don't think that i would have come to them unless because i think i've always thought of these things in terms of romantic relationships and when you do research on like attachment and interpersonal communication unless you're like like i feel like the overlap is in like poly circles too like the people talk about having like like addressing poly, polyamorous circles mm-hmm. got it talk about like um attachments and vulnerability with friends and like all different kinds of relationships but there's always sort of a twist of it being like some kind of romantic partner most of the time romantic or sexual expression yeah and i mean that's great that's really good too it's a separate thing but the idea of it being a platonic or even professional relationship and also having to engage in that kind of vulnerability because there are a lot of people that do define authentic art making the way that we do that maybe aren't even dating that are doing collaborations like that Like, there's a very specific kind of relationship that has to be forged between those people for that to be a long-term 
functional collaborative relationship. And I think that's a really intriguing thing to think about. Yeah, because that's something that I've been thinking about is not just how we're making this, what we're making, what we want to make, but the long term health mm. of this project. Yeah. It's like, and like the, ugh, the way that we've been doing this recently has been unhealthy mm. for the, for the project. Like this, even know. this project as a third entity of, from ourselves, like we've been like hurting it yeah, and like not allowing it to like, I don't know, like we haven't been paying enough attention to the, to the, I don't know to the to the voice of mm. that you know we, we haven't been listening yeah you know and i think that mm. i don't know because like obviously to the viewer they're just enjoying a nice podcast <laughs> and they don't see any of this i don't know like they they only the the viewer sees what we what we present you know and that's obviously the way it is but like to us like there's so much there's so there's like so much three dimensional space yeah around that that if we don't take care of that we would we will we ultimately will lose the podcast yeah you know like if this makes us feel bad if this hurts us or if it becomes way more grueling toiling work mm. than it is fulfillment we won't do it well, I guess that's the thing that's really interesting about it being an authentic, or in like a perfect world, an authentic time capsule almost of these conversations that we're having. Because essentially what we are recording and what we are documenting is a small part of our overall interpersonal relationship, which is our artistry and our collaborations. But if our relationship isn't in a good place or if it's just like we're having trouble communicating that like artistic communication facet of our relationship is the podcast that is our content so if it's not healthy of course it's not going to work out because what we're talking about is our ability to connect and i think that's a pretty fr profound thing that it's, i guess maybe is really obvious but i didn't think of it like that until recently i have no idea man because one thing that, you know, we, we talked about yesterday, too, is the idea that maybe in a sense we're creating anti-content, mm. you know, where we're not really, we're not trying to sell things very often. Yeah. We're not like we, we're not, we aren't always, you know, we're not really promoting something. We do have a book if anyone cares. <laughs> yeah, shout out. Give us <laughs> please, money. Please Thanks. check out our book. But like ultimately... <laughs> Besi besides that <laughs> like I mean at the like all jokes aside like we're this isn't a commercial this is just something like it I don't know what it is I have no time capsule I get yeah it's just whatever this is like yeah and like uh, like <laughs> I don't know and we've also been trying not to uh, we've been trying to be kind of mindful about the way we use the word content yeah, that's an interesting because thing too. Because it's become a kind of like bastardized, sinister, like mangled version of the word. Mm. It's kind of interesting that content and content are spelled exactly the same. Huh. <laughs> also, weird, weird visual thing to notice about that word, but... Corgi. Um, yeah, cute. Uh, mm -hmm. But like, I just think it's kind of... I just don't want us to end up in a place where the word content means something bad. Yeah. Or kind of like, you know. Like a stressor. Just kind of like shitty and inauthentic and like clickbaity and just stupid. That is how it felt for a while too. Because I feel yeah. like this is something we've been intentionally recontextualizing because we defined this the other day and realized how we've been thinking of it. But for me anyway, the word content like when you say content or making content you're talking about like making a video for tiktok you're talking about making reels for the instagram page to get people to watch the podcast you're talking about running an ad campaign like studying your analytics like yeah. making shit content for the sake of attention 
engagement, selling something, like, something that has, like, a bargaining chip under, like, digital capitalism is content. But that's not necessarily what it has to be. Like, any kind of art that you're making is artistic content by, like, the media. I mean, the uh, definition outside of media, like, the dictionary definition. Everything on this podcast is content, but it's not content for the sake of content. You know what I mean? Like, there's this little echo chamber that that word has become that I think is really toxic and it makes me want, not want to make anything. <laughs> and also, from an artistic perspective, content that you're, we're talking about in that way, from an artistic perspective, doesn't have content. Let me explain. In an art okay. class, <laughs> in an art, in like an art class, or in like with art theory, content is the message and story and uh you know the meaning oh. meaning within the piece of art that's what you would call that in art theory yeah but don't you think it's kind of interesting that like it's like yo what's up welcome to mike's like cheese uh, pizza review podcast <laughs> like blah, 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 blah. like i don't like that's like you're like okay here's some pizza content yeah but like you're there's no like like transcendent value yeah of a commercial for pizza <laughs> you know <laughs> like there isn't any content yeah do you know I what mean, i mean and i just think it's entertainment it's kind of uh, ironic at that point and there can be there that kind of value to entertainment but like it's like commercial it's commercial entertainment yeah it's kind of like how commercials literally like super bowl commercials are funny mm, mm-hmm. we love super bowl commercials let's all fucking sit sit on the couch and watch the fucking ads and that's the thing like when it becomes something that has any kind of like if the motivation behind the creation and is, is in any way related to money or currency, I guess I should say, because sometimes currency isn't doesn't necessarily dollar signs, but it's attention. If it's views, if it's likes, if it's money, if it's advertising of any kind, there's a sort of manipulation happening over the content creator. Like, and in the past, I think we've talked about this and have said that it feels manipulative because you're trying to manipulate people to engage with you. But I think it's a bigger picture thing than that because when I am making content in that context, like content for the internet, I feel manipulated as a creator to make work that will match the zeitgeist or that will appeal to people. I'm not just expressing myself. And there's even reason to believe that just expressing myself without having any kind of thought about what people are going to think about what I'm making or presenting is bad because of whatever that person will think. There's like a third entity in the room that is telling me what to do and it completely stifles my creativity and makes me not want to create and makes me feel depressed about creating. Like I just, actively negative, actively stressful. And in small doses, it can be really good. It's how you build a career with your work is like monetizing. But if that's 100% and if that's the goal, it ruins it. And I feel like we slowly started inching towards feeling like that with podcast content yeah and one metaphor we talked about yesterday that was useful was the idea of like you know without getting like too into like the darkness of this like you know on the internet and on instagram and in old tumblr days like with fitness or with weight loss or with eating disorder stuff people talk about body inspiration mm-hmm. or body inspo yeah or like bo- goal body goals fitness goal and like and maybe that's helpful for some people, but at the end of the day, what that turns into is you seeing things that you are not yeah. online all the time that just remind you of what you are not. Yeah. You know, look at this ideal, look at this model, look at this person that's in amazing shape. Look at you. Don't you wish you looked like this person? Yeah. Save this to your fucking Pinterest board. Yeah. <laughs> so you can remember to look, you know, and that's fucking terrible. Yeah. That's fucking awful for people. You know what I mean? And you know it can like promoting shit and like making art turn fucking really if you're not fucking paying attention it turns right into that yeah it turns directly into that when like i don't know i don't know and there is an element of that with and maybe this is what you're saying but an element of that with art making too where it's like i have a art goals folder do you have an art goals folder 
where it's just other people's paintings and other people's art styles and maybe in theory you're gonna go reference it when you paint but really you just go through it and feel like shit and then don't know what to paint when you go to paint you know so toxic i stopped uh, using it in my studio because uh, of that <laughs> i have had versions of that but i didn't think about it that literally i think but that i've done that it when i use it sometimes it's helpful if i'm like trying to learn something from someone or if it's like a I really like videos versus photos. So I think appreciating someone's work and thinking that it's interesting, buying it, engaging with it, that's all great. That's like what museums are for. That's social media is really good at promoting that. But if you're like taking screenshots from a certain painting and then trying to paint like that, and it's not an educational exercise, it's just like, I'm abandoning my art style right now because this one's better and they have more followers and they have more likes and whatever. Like there is a weird kind of creative version of that as well. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah. The big thing with music too, like a lot of people might just try to like write songs as if they're a ghostwriter for their favorite band. Yeah. You know? And in some doses that can be fine, like master copies essentially well, is what you're so, talking about. But, but. The, there's a difference between an educational exercise and your output. Being like being suffocated by a, like an ideal that like yeah. a, you know, by an oppressive ideal. Yeah. You know, because we're always comparing, you know, like that's what judgment is and self-improvement is, is comparing yourself to an ideal. Yeah. But that can very, very quickly without like, with you know, that can, it's a slippery slope that can get dangerous. It can get bad for you, you know? It's all about moderation. <laughs> yeah. Moderate. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm just, uh, yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> We don't have to get into moderation. <laughs> I just think it's about, about in, in, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. All this shit's different for everybody, but well, I don't know. I think as far as us and this podcast, the lesson that I'm currently on is that the reason that we collaborate and the reason that we do these things together is because it bolsters us and because it's better when we're working in unison we both do a lot of work on our own and that's a lot of fun and i think that's really important and good for our own personal development but the reason this podcast specifically has two coasts because we both bring something different to the table and one of the things we both bring to the table for each other is support and having those open dialogues and being vulnerable when we're feeling like we're not connecting bolsters that support and that carries over into romantic relationships, that carries over into friendships, that carries over into any kind of creative collaboration that you're having. But I don't know about the, like, art board stuff and all of that, like, the, I don't know what your solution is to that. <laughs> but relying on the people that care about you and relying on the people that understand you intellectually and creatively is a good place to start. Yeah, I agree. And it's also important to remember that with this particular endeavor, like the podcast, this does have value beyond content it does have value beyond being a time capsule just for me and you Mm. what we are doing is we are in the world learning about ourselves about art and about you know just the the philosophy of the world and we are processing that and learning about it and then articulating that to people that might listen and that is a worthwhile thing and i think that is something that everybody should do even if it you know not i don't mean everybody should make a podcast but the point of, of this shit and like one really fucking dope thing to do is to is to is to articulate, you know, to be able to articulate your worldview to your people. Yeah. That's the that's a fucking that's a very that's a human ass thing to do. And, and that's dope. In a vulnerable way. Like if you go into it like if we went into every interview acting like we already knew everything about the person or if we started talking to somebody about something and we're afraid to ask real questions and look stupid, you're yeah. not going to fucking learn. And it wouldn't no. be any good for you guys. Right. You would wouldn't know we good. were lying. <laughs> yeah. Damn. And I guess we'll leave them leave them with that. Oh, yeah. We're in an hour and ten. That's almost. okay. And I'm like, lo- I'm like rapidly losing. It's time for dinner. Losing energy. All right, guys. <laughs> Any finishing thoughts? Um... Oh, let me just really quickly Google the name of the writer of that book that I recommended. Oh, okay, sure. <sighs> but it yeah, guys. Is, um, oh, who's it? Hold Me Tight, Seven Conversations for a Lifetime of Love by Dr. Sue Johnson. It's on elect, uh, Emotionally Focused Therapy or EFT. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for listening. Boston Art Podcast. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Yeah, do that. All right, bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>